Dee Dom. And we are recording. Guess what, folks? That's the sad day. Yes, it fucking is. Time for a bit of what's up. So, going to um, answer one of the questions that a lot of people have been... What's, what's up with the beard, Vic? And why have you not cut your fucking hair yet? You look like shit. Next, is it Saturday or Sunday? I can't fucking remember now. It's next weekend sometime. Part two of the Vaping Misfits Charity Live is going on. Um, part one was at the beginning of this month. So, I don't do spicy food and I don't do anything that basically upsets my stomach because my digestive system is fucked and it's been fucked for a long time now. So, I, I don't know... I, I don't know how I fucking agreed to do this, but I'm shaving my head. Essentially. I'm keeping the eyebrows, but this is coming off and this is coming off sometime during the charity live next week. And I thought to myself, well, normally I, normally I trim the beard down to like a number three and I trim the hair down to a number three. So if I was going to do that, uh, like last week, because it is getting a bit in the fucking long side now, and it's starting to go to a point down here. This is why I don't grow the beard out, because I start to look like Emperor fucking Ming after a three or four months. But I thought to myself, hold on, if I trim the beard and trim the hair down, the effect of shaving the whole lot off is not going to be all that great when I'm on the charity live. So I thought, you know what, fuck it, I'll just grow the whole fucking lot out for a couple of months. And that way, there's a bit more of an effect when I shave it all off during the charity live. But yeah, uh, look up the Misfits, uh, the, the Vaping Misfits channel. There's going to be more information about the charity live that's going on, uh, including the date and the time. I think it's the 23rd. I think it's next Saturday. Yeah, I think it's it's next Saturday. So there'll be more information about the charity live probably on this weekend's Vaping Misfits live show. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of people on it as well. I think the folks from uh, I think the folks from um, um, the I not not the Ideal Home show that was fucking Richard Vic show. What the fuck. Solom's live show on a Thursday before us. I think they're on. Um, Gail, Bunny and Jules, I think they're going to be on. UK Vape Show lads, we're going to be on at some point in time. And there's going to be a few other people guesting. It's going to be a 12-hour long... It's going to be a 12-hour long charity live. I don't quite know what time uh, me, Aidan and Adam are going to be on that. It's probably going to be about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the evening or something like that. But yeah, keep an eye out anyway. So that's why this is getting out of hand and this looks like a fucking disaster, right? I'm just growing it out. So there's, there's, there's you know, more of an impact when I shave it off. Of course, the week after that is going to be interesting for the reviews because I'm basically going to look like Mr. B. Bald with eyebrows. <sighs> Potato. That's what I'll look like. A fucking potato. I don't like not having a beard. I don't. I really don't. Mm. Any. I, I was actually starting to get used to this though. Trouble is though, I mean, I, I, I'm fucking tempted to grow it out once I start growing the beard back. But this does go to a point. It literally goes to a point. I look like fucking Emperor Ming. That's why I don't grow the beards out anymore. Yeah. I'm fucking tempted to do it though. Like full beard. Fucking all the way down. I don't know though. I don't know. Hmm. Don't know. <sighs> See what kind of mood I'm in when I decide to grow it back. Anyway. Nothing much else to talk about folks. To be, to be honest. Nothing much else. Now. There will be a second live show. On this channel. It will have nothing to do with the UK Vape Show. UK Vape Show is going to be in UK Vape Show is going to be in its usual time spot every Thursday at nine o'clock in the evening on this channel. But I was thinking of doing another live show just by myself for maybe an hour and a half sometime during the weekend. And the premise of the new live show is going to be a bit like the live shows that Grim Green does. Um pardon me, it's going to be a bit like the live shows that Grim Green does, there's going to be a little bit of news intermixed there, stuff that doesn't make it on 
stuff that doesn't make it on to the what's up on Sunday. But I, I'm not sure about the time or the date. It's probably going to be a Saturday. I fucking highly doubt I'm going to end up doing it on a Sunday because the what's up goes up on a Sunday. So the live show's probably going to be on a Saturday. The problem is there's that many live shows that are dotted around, dotted around the week now. Whatever time or date I decide to do a live show, I'm going to end up broadcasting on top of somebody. Doesn't matter if that's... I mean, does anyone do a live show on Mondays? Dean does. Don't want to broadcast on top of him. Pff, Wednesdays are out because that's been little bro. Tuesdays? I can't think of a live show that's on on Tuesday. See, I'm thinking Saturday. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking doing a live show on Saturday. Uh, probably around six o'clock in the evening. Six o'clock to half seven. Something like that. Or maybe eight o'clock. Maybe eight o'clock to half nine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it's something I'm mulling over in my head right now. Basically a, a second live show that's going to have a build section in it, since the build section's no longer in the UK Vape Show, because that's been taken over with Caster's Questions. I was thinking of doing a build section, um, alternating the build section between the latest and greatest tank or dripper, and maybe the following week doing a retro build. Again, I'm basically ripping off ideas from Grim Green, right? I admit it. Put my hand up and fucking admit it. But do a retro build every second week. Because I've got a fucking... But it's not just a box. Two boxes. <laughs> and that size. And that In the corner of old tanks and drippers. Some of them dating all the way back to 2015, 2016. The Smock RSBT. The original Geek Vape Griffin. Not the redos of the Griffin. But the original Geek Vape Griffin. The Watofo Troll Art. Was it Watofo that made the troll? It's been that fucking long. I think it was Watofo that made the troll. Yeah, the Watofo troll, the troll RT. So many old tanks and old drippers in a box. Two boxes down there in the corner. So I was thinking. Why are you beeping at me? You're beeping at me again. Why are you doing that? But uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. I fucking left Second Life open, fucking minimise. I fucking totally forgot I had the fucking thing open. Somebody was sending me a message. But, um, the fuck was I talking about now? Oh, yeah. Um, stuff like retro builds, some news, a Q&A at the end of it. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot like the original, the very first iteration of the UK Vape Show or at least it was called the late late UK vape show back then when it was over on when it was over in Vaping Underground, the old Vaping Underground network over at Vapors TV. It's gonna be more based off a QA kind of thing. A question and answer kind of thing, with a build section shoved in the middle of it. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's try to think, is there a live show on Tuesday? I don't think there is. I don't want to broadcast in some. I don't want to broadcast in somebody that, that that's got an existing show. I don't think there's anyone doing a live show. And shut up, dog. Then it's the neighbour's dog again. I don't think there's anyone broadcasting on a Tuesday. I want to do a Saturday, because Saturdays are more. Saturdays are a lot better for doing a live show on because there's more people basically off work because hey it's the weekend people don't people well not generally but a lot of people don't work in the weekend i want to land it on a saturday and i'm thinking saturday at six o'clock that's what i'm thinking saturday at six o'clock to half seven or maybe saturday at eight o'clock to half nine i don't know yet i'll figure something out i'm gonna give myself a i'm gonna give myself a couple of weeks basically to think it over but that's mulling in my head right now a second live show. Uh, apart from that, folks, that's basically it. Um, there is nothing much going on. There is some first looks to look at. We're going to be looking at the first looks after I finish the babbly bit. Um, and then I'm just going to be cutting the what's up. But I'm going to be cutting the what's up off right at the end of the what's up. But it's been a rather quiet month. Um, that has... Fucking seriously, it has been a rather... I should have shut down Second Life, I really should have. But 
it's been a rather quiet month. Nothing much has been going on um, in the way of releases. There's a couple of RTAs. In fact, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's even a couple. I think it's only one RTA that's due out or has already been released over the past couple of weeks. But the emails that I've been... <laughs> seriously, the emails that I've been getting, um, it's mostly pods and disposables. That's basically it. Pods and disposables. And I'm not reviewing disposables anymore. Uh, the two that were left in the queue... I'm gonna. I'm still gonna be doing them at some point in the future. But you know, any time I any time I pop a disposable review up, I end up losing subscribers. I do. I end up losing subscribers because people look at the disposable review and go, "Fuck you, unsubscribe." This is one of the reasons why I don't want to fucking do them. But there is a couple of disposables left in the shelf that I that I, that, that I do need to get round to actually reviewing. Uh, but. It's, it's been a quiet month. There's no getting around it. It's been a very, very quiet fucking month in terms of news and in terms of the releases that have been coming out. It's been really fucking quiet. Uh, I'm hoping... I'm hoping things will start to pick up in October uh, because we'd already passed... Uh, we're already past the solstice, which means the darker nights are starting to creep in. It's going to take a good three or four weeks before we start to notice it, but the darker nights are starting to roll in, and with August just round the corner, we're heading into September, which means we're now we're we're now basically slowly moving in to the autumn release cycles and the run up to the October. UK Vapor Expo, and if you think about it, we're kind of at the end of July right now, right? We're kind of at the end of July right now. June, July, August, September, I mean, it's only three months. June, July, August, September, yeah, three months. There's only kind of three months to go. In fact, probably less than that now, before the October Expo comes up, and that three months is going to come in and go past very, very quick very quick and I am crossing my fingers that the release cycles that are coming up for the autumn of this year going into the winter of next year is going to be a hell of a lot better than the fucking release cycle that was happening for autumn of 2021 going into the beginning of 2022 which is when the disposable craze was at its peak. I fucking really hope it's a lot better than the, the, than it was at the beginning of this year. Uh, anyway, I think that basically does it, folks. Yeah, I think that basically does it. This fucking the bleeping noise. I've got Second Life left open because I'm in the middle of redoing a large build that I've got going on there and there's people renting the it's a hotel, right? There's people renting in the build and they're asking me questions about doors and windows and why is this not working? It's because I'm in the middle of rebuilding it, leave me alone. But that's why there's beeping going on in the background, folks. Been a very busy couple of days for me over in Second Life. That's what I'm if I if I'm not if I'm not on World of Warships, I play a lot of Warships, fucking seriously, if I'm not in World of Warships, and I play a lot of World of Warships, if I'm not in World of Warships, I'm usually in SL, tinkering away, building stuff, or rebuilding stuff. Uh, but I think that covers it, folks. Oh, that's right, the lost vape thing. Um... <laughs> All I'm going to say is, when I make a screw-up, I make a screw-up. And it's it's a big screw-up that, really, even the dogs agreeing with me, it's a big screw-up that many people don't miss. You know, it's, like, it's not like a little screw-up that only a handful of people go, he screwed that up. It's a fucking huge screw-up where everyone in the comments is going, you fucking idiot! What can I say? Um, I... I don't watch other reviewers' reviews of an item that I'm going to review. Um, and one of the reasons is I generally tend to lag behind other reviewers. I generally tend to lag behind, especially now because I took that week off. But even without that week off, I generally tend to be about a week to a week and a half behind 
other reviewers releases especially over in the united states guaranteed that u.s reviewers get their review up about a week to a week and a half and sometimes even two weeks before I put mines up because number one, US reviewers tend to get their items quicker than the UK. And number two, I generally take time to test things out for a little bit longer. Even if the company decides to do a fast track, the quickest fast track option I've got for vaping with Vic is the one week track, which means the company sends the payment for a one week fast track and I time it for the review to go up four or five days after the payment comes in which still gives me a good two to three days to test the item out especially if it's a tank or a drip or a lud this is why i don't do this is why because there's some reviewers that do a 24 hour turnaround there is some rip trippers one of them he even admitted it himself right long time ago he admitted it himself there are some reviewers that have got a 24 hour turnover in other words payment comes in within 24 hours the review's up with me i don't feel comfortable doing that i, I do not feel comfortable doing that for a time there was a 48 hour turnover fast track and i purposefully put the price of that fast track so high nobody took it because i don't feel comfortable rushing a review out that's why the quickest mainline fast track i've got is the one week fast track payment comes in once the payment's in i know they want the fast track done so it gives me a good two to three days sometimes four days as well to test the item out when I looked at that Lost Fate Centaurus Q200, it was probably me being a fucking idiot, but the little plectrum thing, when I was digging it in, I must have nicked it underneath the actual carbon fibre sticker that was stuck onto the metal plate. Because when I raised that thing up, I'd just seen adhesive and I thought, oh, nope, stuck it back down again. If I had watched other reviewers' reviews, like Paul Vape Don't Smoke, who put his review up about nine days before I did, I would have realised, oh look, they're actually magnetised. Yeah, and on the instruction panel, there was, well, at least the instruction, not instruction panel, the instruction booklet that I got, there was no mention, no mention of the panels. It was just a basic rundown of the chip, what the chip does, and that was basically it. So, yeah. Yeah, when I do a screw-up, I do a big fucking screw-up, folks. That's why I put up the follow-up video. Um, that's why I put the follow-up video up. I didn't take the original video down. I just left it there, and I put a follow-up video um, talking about the actual magnetic panels. But, yeah. <sighs> just goes to show, um, just goes to show that every reviewer out there, doesn't matter what, doesn't matter who the reviewer is, uh, yeah, we do screw ups now and again. Usually, usually the little screw ups that only a handful of people notice. But in my case, they're usually big ones, and I've got to do a follow up video. But if you think about it this way, something like two thousand nine hundred review. Well, there was two thousand nine hundred reviews in this channel before I had to clear out the channel because of the YouTube strikes. Now I'm now I'm down to about something like one thousand something reviews in this channel. Out of the 2,000 odd reviews, and this is for the people out there that have been watching this channel from the very fucking beginning, out of the 2,000 odd reviews that have been on this channel, how many times have I had to do a follow-up? Three times. Three times. In about eight and a half years. Granted, every single one of those three times, the screw-up was fucking huge. Fucking especially the second one that I'm not going to cover because thankfully that video is now deleted. Thanks YouTube for striking the channel. But yeah, um, when I do a screw up, it's a big one. Well, it's a fucking huge one, nine times out of ten. So I've got to do a follow up video to fucking, you know, hey, that thing that I said in the review, it turns out it was wrong. Yeah, thank you. End recording, upload. But yeah, it's... um part and parcel of not watching other reviewers reviews and there's a simple reason why i decided at the very beginning of this channel that when if that if another reviewer has put up a review of an item i'm getting in for review i'm not going to watch that reviewer's review because it tends to shift opinion 
it does. It tends to shift opinion. If you watch, if you're a reviewer, right, and let's say you watch Bogan, and then you watch, uh, you, you watch Bogan, and then you watch Aiden Little Bro Vapes, and then you watch Jay Hayes, and then you watch Mike Vapes, and out of all those reviewers, three of them, the majority, don't like the item. You've got that in your head. You're thinking, well, hold on a minute. Three out of the four reviewers, I trust all these reviewers, three out of the four of them didn't like the item for such and such a reason. There must be something wrong. You've got that in your head as you're reviewing the object that, you are, that you've been sent for an independent, neutral review. But at the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, hold on, Mike Vapes didn't like it. Bogan didn't like it. Aiden didn't like it. Only one person out of that four liked it. Why did the majority not like it? And it's going to be running in the back of your head. Vic, Vic, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, there's the thing that they mentioned. Oh, oh, I don't like this either. But did I like it? Or did I say I didn't like it because the majority of other reviewers that I hold in high regard said they didn't like it either? This is why I don't watch other reviewers. It's why I, it's why I don't watch. Well, it's not that I don't watch. It's that I don't watch other reviewers' reviews of an item I'm going to review until I've already done the review. This is why when I uploaded the Lost Vapes and Taurus Q200, I thought, oh, let's go and watch Paul Vape Don't Smoke and he took the panels off and they were fucking magnetic and I'm like, oh, fucking seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read all the comments, Vic, the panels are magnetic and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to make a fucking video now. So I did. But yeah, I don't watch other reviewers of an item I'm going to review because I found your intentions could be good ones. But the problem is the thought of having another reviewer's comments about something they didn't like on the mod could poison the well of my opinion when I go to do the review. That's why whenever you watch a Vaping with Vic review, you can be rest assured it is my opinions only. There, there, has, there isn't a little voice in the back of my head saying, Vic, you need to say this, you need to say that, because X reviewer and another X reviewer said that thing as well. What you're looking at is my opinions, completely and utterly unbiased and untainted by another reviewer's opinion. That's the way I've always ran this channel for the past eight and a half years, and that's the way I'm going to continue running this channel for the past eight and for the, for the not for the past eight and a half years. That's the way I'm going to continue running this channel uh, from now into the future. It's the, it's the way I've always done it. That way, that way, I can upload a review, happy in the knowledge that another reviewer's opinion hasn't tainted my own. I might be the only one that does that. Because I know, I know that a lot of other reviewers out there, they go out and watch other reviews of the same item that they're going to review, and they're fine. I might be the only review that I might be the only reviewer that does that, but it was something I started doing at the very beginning when this channel first started. Uh, when this channel first started at the beginning of 2014, and I've stuck with that ever since then. Ever since then. Anyway. I think that basically covers it, folks. Yeah, I think that basically covers it. Anyway, there's going to be the first looks and it's, 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 it's pods with a smattering of one or two decent stuff, but that's all that's coming in, at least for, for the next for the next three weeks. It's pods. Because I don't do disposables now, so all the disposable emails I get, I just automatically delete them. It's all pods that are coming in. Anyway, that is it for now, folks. I've got the first loots coming up, and that is basically going to be it. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and yeah, have a good one. Hello, all you wonderful people in the hashtag Floof Army, and of course, all the wonderful people that are watching this later on during the What's Up. So we've got a few first looks to go through, folks, today. Um, some of the stuff that came in has already been sent in. I'm thinking there must have been a mix-up over with Joytech, because Joytech sent me duplicates of everything they already sent in for review, which 
basically knocked the uh, first looks back by half because it turns out I've already showed them. Anyway, first things first. Very interesting podcasts, these. Uh, this is the Vins Vape 24K and the Vins Vape 18K. They're essentially the same unit. One's in gold, one's in silver. Hence 24 carat, one's in silver with 18 carat. They're not actual gold and silver, by the way, folks. They're basically a zinc alloy, a zinc alloy chassis with a good finished paintwork on it. But they're essentially podcasts. That's what these little fellas are. And what you're looking at here is a square pod tank with a built-in coil. The coil is not replaceable, so it's a locked but not sealed pod. You can put your own liquids in here. They have got a silver coated drip tip, however, antibacterial. I'll be covering more about that later on. They're not the first company to do a partial silver drip tip because apparently silver, the metal, is really is a really good antibactericide, or not an antibactericide, a bactericide that kills off bacteria that sit on the surface, but it's a it's a rather it's heavy because this is all zinc alloy and so is this. They are really, really heavy bits of kit. But if we have a quick look here, one, two, three, four, five, you do of course get a little screen here. You get a wattage control. Hold on. Let's get into this. There we go. And it basically round robins from 5 up to 30 and then goes back. Well, 5 up to 30 and then goes back again. But you get a full screen on this. Puff counter, battery resistance, all that stuff as well. So it's, it's an interesting pod device, this. Um, it's a very interesting pod device. They're basically going for what some may consider the high end of the pod market, if there was such a thing as the high end of the pod market, because I don't know any other pod device out there that has come out with a chassis like this for the battery part and is also extremely heavy, because these have got some weight to them. They've got some weight, full control uh, on the wattage as well, and it comes with two different types of pods. This one's 0.8, and this one is one ohm, so mouth to lung, very, very restrictive direct to lung. And as you can see, there's no actual airflow control in this kit either. The air just goes straight through. So looking forward to testing these. Well, I've, I've been testing out this one, but this one here with the 0.8 ohm coil for the direct to lung, well, direct to lung, it's more of a, it's, well, could you? I suppose you could call it direct to lung. Yeah, I suppose you could. Very, very tight though, but yeah, you could get away with it. I, I'm guessing it's, I'm guessing the point eight is more for a very airy mouth to lung, but I'm still to run this little pod through its paces. I've been mostly using the one ohm pod because they sent a whole bunch of spare pod tanks with us as well. So I've been plowing through them. So yeah, Vins Vape. The Vins 24K and the Vins 18K. What are we moving on to next? We're moving on to this. And I have been looking forward <coughs> to getting my hands on this fella once I get it out the package. Because as usual, Steam Crave have absolutely plastered the box in their URL. So I can't show that. I think this is the gunmetal one. Yes, it is. This is a tank that a lot of people have been waiting for. It is the Aroma Miser Plus version 3 RDTA, an overhaul of the original Aroma Miser Plus V2. It looks very plussy. You know, there we go, designed by BJ, she as always. So you've got your juice flow control ring up here at the top, as you would expect. That's your juice flow control closed, and that's your juice flow control open. And you've got your rather oddly cut airflow control ring. Now it's a single airflow control ring that I've got all these different stripes and this is you, if we open this up, you've got one hole open there, one hole open there for a very restrictive draw. Open it up further, the top starts to open, you're on the second hole here. Open it up, open it up further. More air holes at the top, air hole down below again. Keep opening up. Still that bottom air hole, this is now fully open, and now you're starting to open the top ring. And if we head over to the last one, you're on the last bottom hole here, and as you can see, this top one has lined up right at the edge. And this is it fully open. It's a, it's a weird airflow control they've done with this. 
It's a very weird airflow control, but it saves having the double ring system that the aromamizers have always had. Usual deck, you would expect. Yeah. Oh, actually, they've changed this one slightly. There we go. They've got punched holes here, which means... They're doing bottom airflow with this. Yes, they are. So... This is the first time I've opened this, by the way. It's literally an it's literally first looks for me as well. So this down here at the bottom, this hole down here, where the hell is it? There. That hole is opening up to that hole there, and that hole there is lining up with that hole there, which essentially means you could rig this. The way that they've done the slide method on this, you can close off the bottom air hole. See it? It's between the two holes and still have the side air hole going into the deck and then just nudge it over slightly for the bottom air hole to open up. So technically speaking, the bottom and side air flows are all adjustable, but they're on the single ring. They're not double ringed anymore. They're on the single ring. That's an interesting design they've done for the bottom air flow for this. That's a very interesting design they've did for this. Hmm. Looking forward to trying this thing. I'll probably put this thing through its paces this weekend coming and test it out all next week for a review in a couple of weeks' time. Very interesting airflow. Very interesting. There we go. Plus V3 RDTA. I'm going to be putting that through its paces for a while. And late to the party a little bit because for some strange reason Geek Vape are not sending out all of their review samples to all of the reviewers all at the same time. There's a couple of UK reviewers, I think Dean, the, the, the not, yeah, Devil Vapor. I think, I'm sure it was Devil Vapor. I think Dean Devil Vapor's already got his review up. The, uh, if I can ever get the fucking packaging open. I don't know what's happening over at Geek Vape these days. They used to send out the review packages to everyone at the same time. Now they're doing a staggered release. But, I finally got my hands in this thing, which is, of course, the Boost version 2. And it was bound to happen at some point in time that we're going to get the original Boost. And, oh, I like the, I like the stainless steel finish in this. Slightly brushed effect, but still a slight mirror finish. But anyway, where was I? Yeah, they were bound to do an update for the Boost because the original Boost was a very, very popular AIO from Geek Vape. And the Boost is now showing its age compared to other AIOs that are currently out on the market. What you're looking at here is the Boost 2. Still got that mechanical lock thing that you're seeing here. Internal LiPo, there is no external battery option with this thing because hey, it's the Boost. I wonder what coil it's using. Is it a pre-existing coil? Or is it a new one? Let's have a look here. B series, yeah, it's a pre -ex well, it's a newer series of coils, but the B series has been out for a little while now. There's a couple of other AIOs that are using the B-Series coils, but there we go. B-Series coils, and all you fans of the Aegis Boost, rejoice! There's a new Boost in town, no doubt, with the latest version of the Geek Vape chip sitting in here, but it does look very Boost-like. Still got that Boost look going on. There's your airflow control at the back. Oh, they've made the airflow controller a lot better as well. There's much more controllability with that airflow controller compared to the previous one, but there we go. That was the Geek Vape Aegis Boost. I think that's it. Because again, for some, oh, oh, no URL's good. Uh, for some strange reason, um, yeah, that's the iJaws D20. I've already reviewed that. For some weird reason, Joytech sent the same stuff over again for a review, and I don't really know why they did that, so. We're only midway through the week, folks. This is for the people watching this on Patreon. We're only midway through the week, folks. There's bound to be some more first loots coming up either Thursday or Friday.